Hello. So it's become fashionable to go after American police within the U.S. in the year 2020. And of course, part of that is because the police unions endorsed a unpopular candidate at the time in 2016. And the unpopular candidate among progressives you know, won. And here we are later on. And it looks like for the last four years, there's been sort of an issue where the media has been focusing on one element within an ecosystem in order to prevent people from realizing that if one element within a system is, is corrupt or incompetent, what that really means is that the entire system, not just one element, whether it's just the police, for example, you know, needs reform. And so this is fairly typical of, of what we've been looking at um, that resulted in the backlash against the 2016 progressive, so-called progressive candidate. And I want to show you right now that the, despite the fact that it's become fashionable to go after police and police unions, and I've personally criticized both police and police unions in the past, what I want to show you is that it's all part of an ecosystem. In other words, it's not just the police that are corrupt. You cannot have a corrupt police department unless you have corrupt lawyers and corrupt or at least negligent judges. So let me show you. This is something here that um, I received that's, that's ordering me to appear in court on September 28th at 9 a.m. And you can see it tells me, you know, here you go. Here's the address. And when you get something like this, you have to, it actually tells you, see the court calendar. Because this is just a building. It's got multiple departments. So you, what you do is you go online and, you know, these are all, this is all public information. And you try to find out what's going on. So you go over here and you say access now. And this is, each county is different. But this is what it is for Santa Clara County. So you go online and then there's always a disclaimer. And then, you know, they don't make it easy. But, you know, if, if it was me, I would have switched, you know, this, this one with that one. But in any case, you have to click on that one. Put in your name. And let's go ahead and do this. And then you don't actually need your birth date. You just have to give it, give it enough information so that it can look you up within the system. And get the capture. Looks like it's passed. Okay, and so uh, here it is. The people versus of the state of California. It says it's active. We can see it right here. And there's a complaint. And it was filed in 2019. So let's look at the case. It is now, uh, today's date is September 17th, 2020. Now you can see right here that there's not, there's no information about where to go. I mean, there's just basics here. Nothing, no data available on the table. Now it turns out that you can actually go into calendars and look, Hall of Justice. That's what it says, right? Hall of Justice. Let's go back and see what we find. We can look at the date. And what's the date? It is September 28th. So we'll go ahead and select it. We'll go ahead and go to the 28th. All right. Close. That's what it says. That's what we're going to look at. So, Department 23. And, you know, we can search for it, right? Let's go ahead and search for nothing there. But let's just kind of make sure that we're... I'm just curious about this, right? So, they got that one. They have a hearing. So, over here, you know, when you go on the hearing, it just tells you right away, hey, look, you know, 28th, there's a time. And it's supposed to give you, obviously, the hearing hasn't happened yet. I'll go back. We know it's not in that department. What about this department? Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Got to change that one. Do a little search. Oh, look, nothing again. Nothing. We'll just keep going down a list here. That's odd, isn't it? Nothing. No matching results found. We'll just keep going down a list. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Maybe we'll get a little closer as we uh, move through the list. 
Nothing for 42, 43, 44, 45, 47. I'd like to know who's in 46, but 48, 50, 51, hmm. Nothing. So what's going on? It's interesting because I sent a letter to the district attorney about this case, certified mail, stamped and everything. And that was on July. And I haven't heard back. Uh, in case you're curious, like what a warrant looks like. There you go. And so basically, if you got a warrant, what you're supposed to do is, is you, first of all, you want to look at this. Uh, sometimes you're able to, you know, simply call, um, but they can also make you show up in person and then you'll be given a court date, which is what I did. And I actually went down there and uh, that's where, you know, that's where this other one sh is, is from. So this is here. Um, you go in there, depending on, you can call ahead of time. What you should do is call ahead of time and find out what the bail is. Um, because if you just show up and get booked, you know, you're not going to know what, what the bail is. You're not going to know, you know, how, you know, how to basically navigate the, the system. Because again, as you can see, there's nothing online that would help you. And this is, <laughs> this is pretty, uh, obviously problematic. Um, you know, just trying to look over here. Oh, there's a judge signs off on it. Oh, here we go. So there's the bail, $5,000. That was in this case, um, you, the, the courts can also waive it if they have something like COVID, for example. Um, but that's basically, you can see right off the bat that, you know, this is not exactly the most, you know, um, high tech system. But what's shocking really is that there's no, there's really nothing. This is the most basic system. It looks like some sort of, you know, system that would have, you know, <laughs> that would have been created during a Windows 95, 1995 system. And it's very basic. You can see there's not much information here. Part of that, of course, is privacy. Um, but at the same time, it creates, you know, not necessarily a black hole, but it provides a lot of power for the entire system, not just police, but prosecutors, staff, and everyone else, when only they have the capacity and the access to the information about someone else's court, court case. And you can see how this could get severely problematic if they, if the you know staff wanted to hide someone. And in fact, that's exactly what happened uh, after 9/11. After 9/11, people were you know, picked up on suspicion of crimes, and people and the lawyers couldn't find them. That also happened more recently uh, with immigration, with ICE, where you know, ICE picks somebody up off the street, um, whether it's collateral or direct and ends up, you know, transporting that person perhaps either to a public or a private jail, uh, privately run jail. And, and again, it's very difficult to find that individual. You can see why. If I can't even find a court date on something that I have papers for online, you can see how far behind the system is. But you can also see that it's not, the, you know, it's not only the fault of the, of the police. There are all kinds of other moving parts within the system, namely the judges, the judicial, the judicial staff, even the IT department, and of course, the prosecutors. And you know, if you have a system like this that can't figure out how to prosecute um, something that, you know, where they get a certified letter, uh, where they actually, again, have documents, you know, it's not, it's not always the case that you have documents because on some issues like immigration, it's, you know, it's not something the police can handle on their own. They're a local department. Immigration is a national or a federal concern within the federal jurisdiction. So, you know, they would have to pick somebody up and then transfer them to the federal government or basically in this case, you know, it would be ICE or DHS. And then that would get the wheels moving. So you can see a couple of things. Now, even when you don't have that local to federal um, transfer process, which of course, now you're on different systems, but even when you don't have that, you know, you still have, you know, you have a purely local concern with an incident that, that um, you know, that is, that is, that happened in the city of San Jose in Santa Clara County, even in that situation where everything is purely local, there's transparency is non-existent for the most part, at least when it comes to substantive details. And, you know, again, 
This is not the case with civil cases. Let's go back and let me show you. If you're in a civil case, oh, whoops. All right. And let's go with uh, something here. And this is a civil case. Events. You can see everything is here. Now, unfortunately, you can't click on it to get the data. Um, you can in federal court. Hearings, everything is transparent. Everything is public. They even have a little printable thing here, but uh, you can see that now, if I, if I wanna switch over to a federal case, these are all state cases, and so it's on a different system. If I wanted to switch over to what's called PACER, P-A-C-E-R, I can actually click for a nominal fee. I can actually click on something like, well, not, let's see, um, here we go. Um, this, is, this would be a, a civil motion. And so if, if I were, you know, well, actually there it is, it's a motion to eliminate. So in, in federal court, I can just click on this and I would be able to it would pull up, the, the, the document would pull up. And you can see how far behind states are, you know, because this is a very simple issue of simply scanning the documents in favor of transparency. But once again, there's, there's even on a civil side where perhaps the privacy concerns are less severe, you can't do any of that. So on the one hand, you have a different system with the feds, but at least the feds are more transparent. You can see that within this USA system of federalism, you know, technology is, is also to blame in the sense that you have all these different systems. If you have Santa Clara County on one system and the federal government on a different system because one lobbyist decided to put, you know, you know people of Santa Clara County on, on, let's say, Apple, iOS or, you know, Google or Android. And, and then on the Fed side, somebody decided to come in and put them on, you know, AWS, which then hosts a different platform maybe, you know, a Microsoft One platform or something else, a cloud-based platform. You know, I'm not a technology expert, but, you, but you know, you don't have to understand technology to realize that there are so many different protocols and so many different applications. And that we haven't even gotten to something like open source. But ultimately, you can see how political this system is within the U.S. where, you know, little fiefdoms get created all across the country that are aided by a failure to get on a single technological standard. And we've been taught in the US and actually all over the world that having a single standard and standard is terrible. And I'm here to tell you that I, I used to believe the same thing, but you, and, and, and in theory, it's true. You want different systems because if you have a single system, especially one that's based on DARPA's open protocol, this is just an open system, which is why it's insecure. If you have something like that, you probably do want different systems to see which one is the most secure. Um, but, you know, ultimately, the fact of the matter is, if you have multiple systems, it's, you have more complexity. And you have to have more, you know, you have to have smarter people within the government, within the IT departments, within, you know, just all over the world. And when you start thinking about the fact that this data might be hosted, not necessarily even in Santa Clara County, it might be hosted somewhere else, it might be, you know, a contract that gets posted on, uh, or, you know, as a result of an RFP, and then somebody, you know, within the U.S. gets, you know, wins the contract by bidding the lowest, and then outsources the maintenance of the system to a um, to a trusted provider that's not necessarily in the U.S. You know, ultimately, the fact that data is intangible can help, but at the same time, you can see what happens if you have Congress or you have state legislators uh, that don't know what's going on. Because, like I said, the federal system is is 100% more transparent than the local system. And since 9-11, the whole idea of home homeland security has been to merge these two systems. And you can't. I mean, well, it means, well you can, but it would, it would require cooperation. Um, you know, you, in other words, you can't do it if, if you're in a system where people want to hold on to their contracts or if they have a tenure contract. And, you know, that's where we are, you know, a 10-year contract with, you know, or maybe it's going to cost them more uh, to switch. Who gets to, who gets to decide that single standard? And if we don't want a single standard, then how do we at least have a system in place that allows the same sort of transparency across the country? And, you know, like I said, you know, in, in, in the court system, I've said this before, uh, the court system is, you can see how this is much better, right? It looks like a modern court system. 
you know, I've got an account I can show it to you, but you know, like I said, it's the same, very similar setup, except that you can click on the links. E each filing has a link. Um, and this is important for transparency. If you think about it, you can't have journalism without transparency. Because if you don't have transparency, then in order for me to find out, you know, about your case, I can't just go online and see what's been filed. I have to call and I'm at the mercy of a government employee that, that, that does not necessarily want an outsider to gain access, uh, you know, to what's going on within that department. And, you know, you have to imagine, you know, the government's getting bigger and bigger every year. Is it really because they're getting better and more efficient? Um, what's going on behind the scenes? And the whole idea is, you know, after 9-11, after DHS, after a greater a congressional, uh, greater congressional willingness to fund technology and security, the real question is, have we simply created a system of surveillance? You know, have we just sort of cemented that system and to the point where now we're just trying to globalize that surveillance system uh, rather than trying to focus on you know, merging these systems in a way that's consumer friendly and citizen friendly. And as you can see, your answer, at least as of 2020, is right in front of your face.